Hello everybody and welcome to the Pointless Side Quests Let's Play of the 30 Years of WrestleMania mode for WWE 2K14. I'm Nick Wynn and uh, joining me today is... John Markley. I'd still, like to gonna... I'd li I'd still like to think that you're the one joining me. <laughs> Semantics. And uh, yeah, today we're going to be tackling the uh, daunting 30 Years of WrestleMania. So we're gonna now, what's, it what's, off. The full, what's the full title of the game? Uh, WWE 2K? 2K14. Okay. Yeah. The uh, franchise was bought after THQ went under by 2K Sports. Okay. Now, I have not... Now, I have not... We're, we're, captu we're capturing via Nick's uh, PS3, so... I have not played this game. How much experience do you have with it? Uh, I'm almost all the way through the 30 Years of WrestleMania mode. I'm okay. on the last match. Okay. And uh, I've... I've played actually oh, quite a bit more than uh, I'd care to admit out loud. Okay. Now, how does this now this mode? How does it work? Uh, the Thirty Years of WrestleMania mode takes uh, one or two of the matches from every WrestleMania one through twenty-nine. Uh, this was released before WrestleMania Thirty, but is like a lead up to it, okay. uh, and, and kind of highlights some of the great moments and matches. Uh, well, one of the cool things it does is it improves on the uh, WWE 13's um, Attitude Era mode, which had these um, optional moments to recreate moments from the Attitude Era okay. and makes WrestleMania moments, which are real moments that happened in WrestleMania that were pretty famous. You know, uh, spots, uh, the 60-minute Iron Man match between uh, Bret Hart and uh, Shawn Michaels as well as some Undertaker streak matches and just some of the crazy things that happened there. Okay. And so, uh, because I've already played it, this uh, little cinematic plays before, um, you start the mode up, but we're going to go ahead and play it. Oh, so you, yeah, of our... We're actually, we are, this, this, is, um, this is not pre-recorded footage. This is, uh, Nick is playing this live. Yeah. I should, I should mention that due to my rampant paranoia about possible copyright issues, we have switched off the, uh, the entrance themes and so forth. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. so you'll just have to sing "Real American" to you know to yourself. It all began on March thirty first, nineteen eighty five. All right, I'm One gonna start this video here. Vision. Okay. It began here. Welcome to the greatest sports entertainment spectacular of all time. And it would change our world. I just realized you can't hear this, can you? No, not really. I can kind of read it. As the vision grew, we but cheered it on. This place has gone crazy. Stood in awe. The irresistible force meeting the immovable object. Held on to our seats. The eyes of the world are on this. It's so match weird to look tonight. at Vince McMahon before he's Dream become this and caricature of himself. Yeah, it's yeah, it's true. Well, it's kind of funny because when I was growing up, like he was like the announcer on Monday Night Raw. Right? He was like the co-announcer yeah. on Monday Night Raw. He was the face. He was the face announcer. Jerry and it was Jerry Lawler was the was the heel. Yeah. Yep. I think he did commentary too, as well. Yeah, oh, that's what I meant. Yeah, he was like, yeah, like the commentator, yeah, the TV, television commentator. Not just yeah. Yeah, and it was, it's, it was, it's kind of weird to look back on that now, where he's, you know, he's the nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny, like he, he always announces WrestleMania to my knowledge, and so they have him dolled up in his, you know, nice suit, not using his Mr. McMahon voice where he's. Growling and graveling. WrestleMania 5! At that WrestleMania. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to WrestleMania! Does, does he still do the power walk? Oh, yeah, I, I believe so. I think he's always done that. Okay. I know that um, uh, one of the things they, they show on the WWE Network, which I've subscribed to, um, is they do a bunch of backstage stuff. Mm hmm. And um, one of the things they talked about in one of the shows, I can't remember which, uh, was the gorilla walk that Vince McMahon does. Okay. And um, like they were, they were like, "Oh, so what started it?" And Vince is like, "Well, this is actually how I just walk around in real life. <laughs> it's just everybody makes fun of me all the time, so I decided to do an extra cheesy version when I first walked out of the uh, the, the wrestling, uh, the backstage." And so, and so now everybody does it all the time, and uh, yeah, he's got a good thing about it. Okay, okay now what's our, fir so what's our first on. match? What's that? So what's our first match? 
Our first match is Andre the Giant versus Big John Stud, the Body Slam Challenge match. And this is basically just, just like this is basically just battle to see who's the better enormous guy. Yes, basically. I actually didn't know that like that was really a contest, and I think I don't remember if they announced his weight, but I'm pretty sure Big John Stud is still very clearly outweighed by Andre the Giant. Yeah, he, yeah, he is. Well, I, I actually, Big John Stud was billed as six feet ten inches. Andre the Giant is like seven foot four. Mm. Andy outmasses him. Andy outmasses him a great deal as well. These men. Right. Uh, now that now the now the pre-match stipulation for this, I believe, is that if Andre wins, he gets fifteen thousand dollars of Big John Stud's money, but if he mm-hmm. loses, he has to like retire from wrestling or something. Yes. Okay. Uh, or if Andre fails to slam Big John Stud. Oh, that's right. Yeah, two body face. slams here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we'll go ahead and start this up. Yeah, this is kind of we'll. A little bit of post editing will fix it. You know, it's going to sound less weird to you guys, but right now all I'm hearing is crowd cheering <laughs> and seeing this guy. I can actually hear his, his footsteps too. Just him walking down the that is ring. Big, big John Studd, real name uh, John Minton uh-huh. from uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, d- sadly, uh, d- uh, died in 1995, age of 47. Damn. Of, uh, well, from. Uh, liver, liver, liver cancer, unfortunately. Um, this this angle was, I believe, part of. There's some ongoing. Speaking of battling huge guys, there's some ongoing feud involving him, Andre the Giant, and King Kong Bundy. Uh, who will also be seen. The real soon giant. Enough. Maybe, uh, well, well, really huge guys. They're like Highlanders. You know, there can be only one in the end. <laughs> right. Yeah, Andre the Giant outweighs him by 100 pounds. Okay, yeah, Andre the Giant. Andre Giant's real name was uh, Andre uh, Rusimov. Although he really was from Grenoble, France. Yeah. That, there was a lot of, like, you know, du- there was a lot of, you know, like, dubious hometowns in those days, but he really was from Grenoble, France. <laughs> uh, he actually, uh, Big John Stone, like I said, died at 47. Andre actually died at the age of uh, 46 in 1993, huh. sadly. That was, like, a little bit after they released, um... Princess Bride, right? I'm not sure. I think Princess Bride was a little early in that, although I'm not certain. Mm. It's kind of sad irony. Yeah. He died in Paris. He was in Paris to attend his father's funeral. Oh, and he sucks. died of uh, heart failure, which un- unfortunately, heart failure is uh, very common for uh, people who suffer from uh, gigantism, as he did. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. like <laughs> People people, that, it... people with gigantism, they often have shortened lives. Yeah. Sadly. If you've ever seen the Amazing Colossal Man, they the whole plot hinges on that premise. <laughs> I'm not joking. I haven't. No, I haven't. I haven't seen it. But I did not know there was a movie called The Amazing Giant Man. Colossal Man. Colossal Man. Yes. He was also the uh, first ever inductee of the Hall of Fame. Oh. Okay. Oh, and you know we're talking. Speaking of liver cancer, Andre the Giant was uh, known for could and often did drink in excess of 100 cans of beer in a sitting. Good lord. Okay, now this is explaining okay. some of the rules. So Next. pretty basic commands. Oh shit, I let him jump on me. Uh, but I can move and then just basic strike. X would be grapples and then the circle will Irish whip. But and since he's in the ring, uh, in the corner, then I'll just pick him up. Um, one thing that you're going to notice when you go back to edit, son of a bitch, the video, is that uh, whenever you do a this knife edge chop... This isn't edited, Nick. This is there's this is just raw, untrammel, undiluted. It's as real uh, as wrestling... It's, it's, un- it's as real and unscripted as wrestling itself, Nick. <laughs> live on Monday night. Um, oh, God damn it. Um, Ooh, reverse whenever it. a character does a knife edge chop, any character, but... Um, the crowd will woo. Really? To, uh, yeah, just like an homage to Ric Flair. And the funny thing is, this is like canonically, this matches before uh, Ric Flair even came into the WWE. I know, right. And this was uh, now. What year was first WrestleMania in '83? Um, no, it's 30 years. '84. 
Now, how does this mode work? It's you said it's it's um you know it's like it, it's all the match it's these matches. Do you like do you have to like reenact specific moments of the match? Yeah, for, for most of them you do. Um, this one, since it's the starter match, it's really just tr kind of trying to familiarize you with the controls, okay. get you to understand uh, what all the different buttons do, get you, used to reversing. And you have to pick them up and body slam. Yeah. Yeah, actually... Now, even there's, a, there's a timer down both. in the corner, is that like... Oh, oh, finish match in under six minutes. That's your historical objective, I see. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to try and finish it right here, actually. Oh. Alright. Another weird Andre the Giant thing. Uh, you know, the big show, Paul White, was at one point early in his career billed as Andre the Giant's son. Oh. Huh. I know he was billed as, uh, before, uh... He came to the WWE, he was billed as just the Giant. Right. Oh, damn it. When he was with the NWO. Now, how, now I noticed that I see it, it'll say, like, reverse. How do you do a reversal? Uh, at certain moments, when you're um, grappling or striking an opponent, uh, a little prompt will pop up, and it will uh, say for me to press the R2 button, uh, the right shoulder button. And uh, if you hit it at the right moment, then it'll reverse it. The problem is that like the window is kind of small, and you have to actually get a pretty good feel for when you should, not just knowing when the button comes up to press it. Now that replay, does that happen automatically at certain moments? Or? Yeah. Okay. Usually after a finisher or a big move. Okay. Okay. Front face headlock. There we go. All right. Fifteen thousand dollars. Yep. Buys a lot of lot of can, beer, cans of beer. <laughs> Double bags of money in the WWE apparently were either filled with fake money or ones. <laughs> Like, any time, like, uh, especially when the wrestlers would try and throw money to the crowd. Because I know that when Ted DiBiase, um... So you don't have to, no, the match is over just with the, with the, with the slam. You don't have to get a pinfall or anything. Yeah, okay. in this case. And some of the matches are like that, actually. The special where situations, the, sure. Yeah, a special ending. Now, I believe that's the only, uh, WrestleMania 1 match they have, right, for this game, right? Yeah. Yep. So... So we, we don't get to have the uh, climactic tag team match with Hulk Hogan and Mr. T? No. And I think what happened was they couldn't get Get Mr. the rights T. to Mr. T? Yeah, to give to get the rights to the to uh, the match. That, that figures. So we'll move on to this next one. And then it is the Hulkster versus King Kong Bundy in a steel cage match for the WWE Championship. All right. Say so date. What's the date there? Uh... The date is April 7th of 86. Oh, so maybe it did start in 85. Okay. Was WrestleMania 2, was it 2 or 3 that, like, they, they filmed it in, like, three different places simultaneously? I'm pretty sure that was, uh, 